Welcome to the beautiful south of France. After an epically early start this morning, leaving the UK, we're about 30 minutes from Lyon Airport and the guys have taken us to the River Rhone in the heart of Lyon. The interesting thing about this place is the River Saone from one end of France is a kilometre in that direction. This is the Big Rhone coming from the Alps and then they all meet together just down here, about two kilometres away and join together. So fingers crossed for a bite. Well, as Roman said, the fishing here is very different to what we're used to in the UK, but the tactics are actually pretty similar. We're going with big feeders, 120 grams, but we're fishing in eight meters of water. So we're using river cages and combi feeders, make sure we get this munger down to the bottom. Hopefully a barbel will come along. There's some carp here as well, the guys have told us. The barbel average, sort of six or seven pounds, something like that, sounds good to me. Now, that smells gorgeous, but it doesn't smell as gorgeous as the feast Mr. Fred has laid on for us. I'm gonna go and get tucked into that and hopefully one of these rods is gonna loop over soon. Well, this was a lot better than the Dairy Lee Lunchables that Roman normally has for his lunch. It was pretty clear these guys were gonna look after us with some beautiful French cuisine. What was also clear was probably by the end of the week, my trousers weren't going to fit me anymore. Well, it was really cool to go and spend a couple of hours in the middle of the town centre trying to catch some fish. Unfortunately, all I caught was a scarf and I nearly caught somebody's dog. I opened up a can of luncheon meat thinking that might be, uh, be the one, do the trick. And uh, a dog ran off with all of it. So I didn't actually get the chance to even try it. Well, now we're in a, a completely different setting. I mean, look at that, that is just unbelievable. There's a big barrage up here. I've got no idea where we are. Roman seems to know the area quite well. Obviously, Jeff, Fred, they know exactly where we're going and what we're doing. We're going to do the night. We're going to do our best to put some of these French beauties on the bank. Uh, they're showing us up at the moment, but we've only been fishing for a few hours. It's been really fast paced, jumping from spot to spot. I can't wait to get going. Well, that didn't take long. New spot, bit of renewed spirit. I think we both had a bit of a buzz, didn't we, Rome, when we got Absolutely, down here? Yeah. And uh, it was just sorting out a bit more ground bait, actually. It was running out of bait. And uh, the rod just went, Urp! not really much indication on the alarm, just the rod tip bouncing as whatever this is, ramped off with my bait. I've got a feeling it's a barbel. I really want to catch a French barbel. That's why we've come over here. But it could be absolutely anything and how about that for a backdrop i mean this is unreal got to be top 10 if not top three places i've ever been fishing doing it with my old mate on a quorum road trip you cannot beat it <laughs> wow look at that for a river tiger it's definitely not the biggest barbel i've ever caught in my life but look behind me it's definitely the coolest 
and it's definitely my first French barbel. On this road trip with my old mate Roman, it didn't take long to get a bike. We stuck with the, pretty much the same tactics we were using in the town centre. I just changed the hook link to a core and coated braid because there's loads of rocks down here and there's some big carp here as well. We've got some right riot gear ready for the night. Let's see what it brings because this weather is epic. Well, the tactics couldn't be simpler. A running rig, 150 gram feeder. I'm only fishing like 20 meters, something like that, but you need that to hold the bottom. There's a lot of water moving out here. Coated braid for all the rocks, and then either a size eight penetrator or a grappler hook. Little dumbbell, just tipped off with a little bit of yellow. It's going dark now. I've always done well for barbel with brighter baits just as the light falls. Good little tip that wherever you are in the world. Let's see if we can get some more. So literally, I just recast this rod and it's absolutely screamed off. So it's quite an interesting bit of water here because it's, it's really pushing through. Um, you know, we're holding with five ounce, five ounces of lead just in front of us. And these fish, well, they're really, really fighting well. So Matt has just put one back and I uh, went up to reach up the rods and yeah, within minutes it was off. So yeah, the fish have arrived and uh, Crikey, they don't half fight well, mate. <laughs> the old big water rods, perfect place to put them through the paces. Fantastic fish. Oh. So using pellet hook baits, Barbell anyway. Yeah. As you can see, I'm ramming the feeder really, really tightly because the flow is so powerful. I just want to have that attraction leaking through continuously rather than having it all escape off in the first few minutes and here she goes when she's ready yes <laughs> let's try Cheers, again mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man yeah man that will do get in there well what can i say barbel fishing on steroids look at this place and what a change from the last spot so this is what we've come for to get a few barbel in the close season and yeah great Let's hope for a few more. The conditions look absolutely bang on for it today. Just a quick rundown of the kit I'm using this evening. So I've got a five ounce river feeder, jam packed with ground bait. It's 18 inches of 12 pound smoke screen, a size eight grappler, and all I'm doing is hair rigging a pellet hook bait and I've paste wrapped that. We've had a lovely barbecue. Just thinking about getting me head down for the night. And the right hand rod literally melted off. 
and now I'm stood in a massive swarm of mosquitoes playing Lord knows what. I think it's a carp, it might be a catfish. Definitely not a barbel. It's definitely not a green. I feel what it is doing, it's pulling my arm off. Oh, the bat just swam, it just, just flew into the line. Oh, that was horrible. Got to watch when they get to that shelf with the rocks. Staying up here is not a bad thing. It's a carp, I think. Is it a carp? See him on the top. You see him right there. Uh oh. The cops are here. Here he is. Look, the cop. The big silver thing. Not ready yet, not ready yet. <laughs> yeah, man! <Whoa! laughs> I didn't expect that. Hey. That fish was like a hundred yards over there. Well, if you'd have said to me at two o'clock this morning when my alarm went off, that at 10 o'clock tonight I'd be holding up whatever this is, this crazy ghost common from out the river in France, I'd have laughed at you. What a fish that is. If it had fell off, I'd have sworn blind. It was three times bigger. It just disappeared, took a hundred yards of line off me down the river, only hooked it two or three rod lengths from the bank. What a fish, what a start the first night. It's turning out to be. Well, that's a wrap, isn't it, mate? I think so. Off on the next adventure, what do you reckon? Absolutely. There's a lot of water to explore and a lot of fun to be had, I think, mate. So, uh, yeah, let's get on the road. Right. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, Matt, I did not expect to be here this afternoon. We've come down to a beautiful bit of the river, haven't we? Mm, absolutely amazing, mate. This uh, is, a, you know, a, an area of outstanding beauty. The Ardèche, for those of you who don't know it, is one of the best river fishing spots in France. And if the last couple of days was river fishing on steroids, it's a bit more relaxed than it. Absolutely, completely different, isn't it? From the old urban street fighting yesterday <laughs> to the barbel on steroids yesterday night. It's like, wow. <laughs> Crazy times. Well, we're staying in these relots for a few days. Lovely little holiday resort. Loads of people could come down here and come down river fishing just as we have. But we're going to have a bit of fun tonight, aren't we? Yeah, we need to think of something, don't we? Well, I've got, I've got something in mind. 
I dread to think. Well, the guys who've been looking after us while we've been here, ferrying us around, putting us mm. on the fish, uh, giving us all the intel, what feeder, what rig to use, you know, they've really been a great help. I think we put them in the limelight tonight, don't you? Mm, why not? Yeah, go on then. I, I think we're going to go Team Fred, Team Jeff. We're the team captains. Sounds good. And the loser, wouldn't this be a shame? It's a busy holiday resort. We're right in the middle of holiday season. What if the loser had to wear something even more stupid than them pink Crocs? What's wrong with these? For the rest of the night. Let's give it a whirl, eh? You're going to end up wearing it. I know you are. Yeah, uh, sure do. Come on, get in the car. Well, we, we couldn't decide on who was going to be Team Fred, Team Jeff, so we decided to flip the GoPro, obviously. Couldn't, we were going to flip some cheese, didn't we? But we thought it was maybe a little bit. Yeah. Li maybe a little bit. Well, who well, I, was got? I was pretty hungry, to be fair, when I needed that cheese. <laughs> but I got Jeff, which I'm well happy with. Yeah. Well, I've got Super Fred, Fred the Master. He knows this venue pretty well. I'm feeling confident. Uh, but you've seen Fred's feeder fishing tactics haven't you mate he's pretty sweet on it isn't he so we'll hopefully see. we'll see fingers crossed we'll because see. whoever loses this challenge let me tell you now go on they're gonna look a right wally uh. <laughs> team fred headed up by our head honcho matthew woods and backed up by fred lorio the baby barbel basher meanwhile on team jeff we had jeff the long commander jeff and Charles Dusman, Roman Vashinsky, giving it the big one. They thought they were going to win, but I've got Fred up my sleeve. So the rules of the game are simple. Biggest fish wins. So is it going to be me, Jeff, Roman, or is it going to be Fred? We're all going to try and catch as many fish as we can. Of course we are. What a spot this is. Truly tremendous. The water is crystal clear. We've got a bit of weed. There's fish jumping all over the place. The weather is epic. I think I'm going to put a big up bait on this. Give ourselves a bit of a head start. Well, let me tell you now, Roman's got no chance because we've got a little ace card up our sleeve. Thomas, the lad with the goatee, good looking guy, Coram Angler, you'd have seen him on the Coram YouTube channel for France. He knows this area so well. And he said to me, the way to catch a big one is to go softly, softly, only recast maybe every 30 minutes or so and make sure you get your rods as close as you can to that far margin. So Fred's gonna fish the open water spot Fish a bit more regular with a feeder. I've gone with bait gripper leads that I've turned the hook link round, pushed it into a little bit of paste inside the bait gripper lead. It's really compact and it's able for me to literally put it a couple of rod legs off the farm.
So we're just in the lead by literally a gnat's whisker. And uh, for some reason, this competition actually does mean quite a lot to me at the minute because uh, I would love to see Matt have a little forfeit. As, uh, he does like to give it the big one occasionally. And uh, I think, yeah, he does, uh, he does deserve to, uh, to suffer a little bit. So yeah, I need to win this really. Um, but yeah, the night is yet young, so we'll see. Well, luckily I've got Fred. Fred's caught one, I haven't. Unfortunately, it's not as big as Roma's. We've pretended that it was, but it wasn't really. Now, I don't mind doing the forfeit. This costume is really funny. It is quite funny. But the, the laughter, the laughs we will have if Roman ends up wearing it, it'll just be on a different level. If I wear it, everyone will be over it. It just won't be funny after 15 minutes. But if he's got it on, there's a fair chance he won't take it off. Well, that's Fred's put us in the lead. That is not a big marble, but it is absolutely beautiful. It's spotted like a leopard. Well done, mate. Like the meridional barbers. It's a perfect it's a one. Thing. Perfect. Let's catch one this big day. No. <laughs> we must. Try it, I try it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fred's off giving Jeff some grief for the fact he hasn't actually caught anything yet. And while he's over there, his rod's absolutely screamed off. It's good fun playing it on this little rod. He's only got a little 10 foot opportunist. Just got to try and keep him out of this weed in the side here. It's not a giant fish, but it does look like another one of them beautiful little barbel. And if, if I'm right, I reckon that's a bit bigger than the last one. Happy days. Now, here's something that's going to blow the mind of most specimen anglers. Fred's caught that on a three inch hook link on the method feeder. I know a lot of guys who fish for still water barbel, catch barbel like that. And when you've got a river like this with hardly any flow, you don't need a long hook link. These fish are hungry, quite happy to attack. A bit of sonu baits, chocolate fish, chocolate orange. And that is just a, an absolute bullet. I can't even hold it. It's absolutely just pure muscle that is. What a little beauty that is. Let's get back, catch some more and extend our lead. So we finally got picked up a better fish so far. Okay, not the biggest, but it's great. Um, we've had a tactical change as well. Gone a little bit longer on the method feeder and shorten the hook links. Um, so hopefully, Jeff, we can get a bigger fish, eh? It's still, still nice. A couple of Come on, Jeff, please. I'm begging you, please. Good lad. This is a good fish. We need this one now. Let's see, Tijon T, thank you. So it worked, the rod over there long. Right. Worked, which is good. So fingers crossed we can get into one. I think there's a bit of weed out there, so it's playing it, playing it hard. But it's a très beau ici, eh? Let's worry. Oh, no. Attends. C'est quoi? C'est 
Hadi de Allah No. No. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. She's got that. Come on, Jeff. Mate, I can't handle the pressure. This is quite tense, actually. So unfortunately, the fish was fighting for a good, uh, good little while out in the flow, and he found himself a stag. Got him moving through it. It's either a weed bed or a big rock or something like that. And at the minute, it's all solid. A tense, tense battle, and this is much needed. Come on. Fish. Found it. Oh. Oh. Yeah, absolutely gutted. The, um, so unfortunately, the fish that was snagged off has fallen off. Um, there's nothing we can do. I can hear the other lads laughing away in glee. But don't worry, it's not over yet. Isn't it? It's looking good for another bite. Well, it's been a bit of a one-man show. Fred's caught all the fish. Loads of beautiful little purple like this. Mm -hmm. ah! <laughs> I reckon we've won that one, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get these back. <laughs> As you can see, my old friend Rolo lost the bet. Fred won the day with a massive two pound barbel and Roman had to dress up as Where's Wally. Wandering around this French supermarket had us all in stitches. <laughs> the girl at the counter, I've never seen a face like it. Roman wandering around, buying his kiwis, getting his beer for the evening. He looked a right wally. safe to say that the lads had a good laugh at my expense but I had something up my sleeve and Matt also had a little uniform to wear. Our little match on the Ardesh didn't bode very well and I actually caught nothing so my forfeit was equally embarrassing. <laughs> For this next spot, we were a little bit further south on the Ardèche in a beautiful swim, a really iconic area called the Broken Bridge. Now the promise here was some good chub fishing and some good barbel, but it was clear very quickly the river was not in good shape. There was hardly any flow, in fact at some stages of the river the flow was going the wrong way. It was time to make an alternative plan. I knew this area quite well 
and with the strong winds, bright conditions, I thought that we could have an opportunity on one of the large gravel pits in the locality. It was great that Roman knew the area well because this was clearly not going to pan out for us. We fished just like how the French lads told us to fish. Up until this point, we'd pretty much ignored them and done, done everything English style. Well, we were listening to them and we were trying really, really hard, but it was clear it was not going to happen. Quorum style, it's time to make an opportunity. Got him. Well, we said it might not take long. I didn't expect one that quickly. That is really cool. A piece of bread and a mega band. Now, if you've never used a mega band before, you really should think about it. On warm days like today, when you've got carp cruising around all over the surface and you just want to ambush them, the best thing to do is get a mega band, a piece of bread, and just wedge it inside. I think this is actually a grass carp, which is pretty cool because if you I don't know if you can see it in the water, but it's actually being followed by a big group of other grass carp. I don't know if all of these fish might be grass carp. There they are. Well, we've been trying for a big chub on the river. We couldn't get one. Well, I've got what equates to a nuclear version of a chub on the end of my line on a floater, which is really, really cool. And there are other grass carp, for some bizarre reason, following him, following him to the net. Now they're renowned for this grass carp, not fighting, then suddenly fighting, waking up. And something I do know, as soon as he goes in the net, he's gonna go absolutely mental. I've caught a few of these to sort of mid thirties in my life, but I've never caught one in France. I've never caught one off the top either. And uh, catching one free lining, sort of 10 minutes after seeing a few fish on the surface is pretty damn cool if you ask me. Viva la France. Viva la mega band, viva la grass carp. It's another species to tick off the list on our road trip. That is a really cool fish to catch from a pretty cool lake actually. The water's really clear, um, nice big lake. It's a, I call it a lake, it's more of a pit, more of a big gravel pit. And uh, it's got some big fishing actually. And this is a lovely start to our adventure here get him in the net ah no and that's what the danger of a grass carp is you get him in the net and then he vanishes i wish i had a longer landing net handle get in there get in there Woo! well we made a meal of that but we've got one. So literally had a little opportunity come up with a load of fish in this lovely little bay with the scum on. And there's a load of grass carp out here just munching away at the scum. So uh, a band, banded big bit of bread, a bit of French baguette on the surface free lined. And we've got ourselves one. Fantastic. And if I can get this wood in, it'll actually be my first ever grass carp, which will be amazing. So if I can keep him away from this snag and this weed, we could have, could have ourselves a little diamond. Come on, come on, come on, baby, come to me. They fight so well. Really powerful fish. Using 10 pound barbell line, which I've greased up. And just a grappler hook. Come on, baby. Yes! Get in there. Yes! Brilliant. Amour! Amour! <laughs> um. Ace. They call these Amour because they're an armor plated missile. We call them opportunist fish. That we literally we turned up to this lake because it's windy. We thought we'd have a go, found some big fish in the corner, didn't know what they were, mega band business on the bread, and we've got 
these armor plated giants. That is actually Roman's first ever grass carp, isn't it, mate? Amazing, yeah. I've caught fish from all around the world, but these, they put on a good fight. And you know what, for my first one, I'm well chuffed and to catch it on a free lined piece of French baguette, literally the same rods we've been using on the river. We, we, we stole some line, didn't we, from yeah. a, a local guy, some vegetable oil to grease the line up, to keep it, off the, keep it um, on the surface. And yeah, within minutes, the rest is history. We're going to try and catch another one, but if we don't, it's been 10 minutes in the right place. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Grass Carp. You've certainly made my trip. What an adventure. Well, a little bit of carnage never hurt anybody. Man, I love fishing when stuff like that happens. Opportunist style, free lining <laughs> in the middle of France. Woohoo! Let's get this beauty on its way. Sonic Chub. beauty so again the fish literally came back into the zone as soon as we put the other two back grease the line up again tied on and fresh hook put a bit of bread on and bang it didn't take long to get another one and it's a beautiful grassy whoa He's torpedoes they're like chub on steroids amazing you keep Did nicking you all my catchphrases is that what you call it? You're, hey. you're hanging around with me too much. Nuclear subs. I think that it went off like a nuclear sub. <laughs> Come on. They see the net and they go, oh, I'm not going in there. Come on. Oh, it's, oh, it's off again, the nuclear <laughs> sub. <laughs> wow. Sometimes, you know, with the really big ones, like 60, wow. 70 pounders, guys do that. They, they prod them with a the net so they don't get the big explosion or a broken net. They let them go and wear themselves out because if you net them when they're still just lethargically lolloping and coming yeah. around into the net, you have a complete disaster on your hands. They're amazing fish, aren't they? I don't really, know. Really interesting, yeah. forgotten about sometimes. Do you know what? I've literally got a fish for over 30 years and I've never ever caught one and literally two in the same day if I can get this in. This is amazing. Come on, come on, you beauty, come on. Yes! Yes! He nearly that got time, away. I was too quick for him. <laughs> he nearly got away. Fantastic. I reckon that might be a little bit bigger than the last one. What a beast. Result. <laughs> She's a bud. Well, that was well worth the move. High temperatures, big winds. We decided to get off the river have a look around the lake and we found a load of these beauties in the corner and that's awesome because it's my second one I've ever had on the same day. Just spellbound. So I think it's on to the next adventure. A bit of opportunist fishing was just the tonic we needed and we started making plans for a big fish, a last roll of the dice on the last day. We baited an area of canal that I knew very well and following this I thought it was time to get our revenge on the French and have another match. This was going to be interesting. This time it was our English tactics versus the French guys. These guys were catching with the kind of techniques that we would use on still waters. We just couldn't get our heads around it. So we decided to spend the last few hours of the evening on a beautiful area of the Ardèche again to try and catch the biggest fish. Biggest fish wins. Who is it going to be? Team England or Team France? Team England took an early lead with a lovely scabby bream and given the stamp of fish that we were catching, this was looking like a winning fish. Both teams were catching, but I have to be honest, 
with the river like a mill pond, the fish we were catching weren't very exceptional. Our bream was looking more and more like the winning fish. Depressing as that may be, because it would have been really nice for somebody to hook into something big. A nice surprise fish for a beautiful evening on the Ardesh. In the final moments of the match, Team England really did have it in the bag and I could see Matt getting really excited and he started giving it the big in. Little did we know what the French lads were going to pull out of the bag. They came walking around the corner with a compact retaining sling with a carp that was clearly bigger than Roman scabby bream. It was the last day and unfortunately the river wasn't looking like the one. Low water conditions were making fishing exceptionally hard. However, the lad suggested another water for us, maybe a chance of a big French tench. And why not? We made our way to the place, had a look around and it looked very promising. We were fishing method feeders and we were fishing method feeders hard. Four rods cast are really good features, but from speaking to some of the anglers in the area, speaking to some of the anglers on the bank, it was clear this wasn't the place where we were going to catch that French tench. It was time to get on the move and find a better opportunity elsewhere. So we are officially the world's most impatient anglers. We couldn't sit there on that lake, kind of knowing that it wasn't going to really happen. We went and spoke to some other anglers. Nobody was catching any fish. We looked in pretty much prime position. Looked good, but it wasn't the one for us. So we've come just literally around the corner, five minutes, to a little beautiful lake. It's like a big, long canal. And we're going to try and catch some nice, big tench. We haven't caught a French tench yet. Let's give it a go. So that didn't take long, little method feeder, just up against the far bank pads and off it's gone. Let's see what we've got there, I don't think it's a tench, it's a little bream, my favourite. So it's the biggest fish of the day and a welcome bite, oh it's a little caresso. How about that then, a few minutes on the new lake and the rod's just gone off with this little carousel as they're known as over here. We don't have them in the UK, but they're awesome little creatures. Well, mate, I think things got a little bit lost in translation this morning. Absolutely. Yeah, tell me about it, buddy. I think the kind of venue that they thought we wanted isn't really the one we ended up at, but we called it nice and early, said we'd give it till lunchtime again. It does really seem like mornings in France are not kind to uh, Team Coram. So we've come to a little tench lake, haven't we? Just to <laughs> sum up fun, a bit, of a bit of a morale boost you've caught whatever that thing was. A little kerosene, they're known as. A local fish. <laughs> well, I've never seen one before, so that was really cool. It'd be nice to catch a tench, that's what we're gonna try and do. We're only gonna give it an hour or something, you know. And then, tonight, what do you think we should do? Well, Go out, should we? Should yeah. we find the bank, or at least try? Absolutely, well, be, we'd be fools not to have a crack at the, uh, the big river. Uh, it's an area that I've fished quite a lot and um, there's always a chance of a big surprise fish if we're lucky. Well, I think, you know, so far we've caught fish that we didn't expect to catch. Mm. We've created opportunities we didn't expect to have. 
and the areas that were sort of nailed on from when we were speaking to Fred and Jeff before we came here haven't really produced very well at all but that's fishing that's the way it goes isn't it and you just got to make the best of it yeah really tough conditions and it's strange time of year as well you know with the fish not really knowing what they want to do so uh, yeah but we have made the most of it like you say well it was worth it just to see you dressed as where's Wally yeah cheers mate The clock was ticking and the team was in desperate need of an energy boost so he made a quick trip to refuel at the local supermarket. We headed off to a French supermarket because in the south they don't like working in the afternoon, they want to chill out, have a glass of wine, put their feet up and to be honest I think we did as well. Everybody really needed this little morale boost, a bit of food, buy some beer for the night time because we were planning to celebrate. It was up to me to decide where we were going to go next and everybody wanted to go back to the big canal. We'd been baiting it through the week. It looked really, really good. It was perfect timing for something really big. And deep down, I didn't know what was going to happen. But all of the guys kept telling me they just got a really good feeling that something special was going to happen here. I wasn't so sure, but if one thing I've learned from fishing with Roman, I have to have faith in him. He knows this area so well. And when an angler as good as that has got a gut feeling about something, you've got to chase it. And to be honest, I'd had a great time, whatever happened. But I, deep down I knew if something special was going to happen, it was going to be massive. Well, how about this? This literally couldn't be more far removed from where we were about an hour ago. It is so windy here, it's open and exposed. We're on the canal, can you believe? A canal that bridges off from the mighty Rhone. We're right next to a busy highway, the mountains. We've got a big silo, great, great big windmills everywhere, a power station. This is really urban, really different to what we're used to. And it's really mega and very exciting because it here live carp to nearly 30 kilos, catfish bigger than I can even wrap my head around. They're a barbel, they're a bream, they're a chub. We're taking a big gamble for the last night, a really big gamble for the last night because we really want to finish on a high. Let's go, let's give it all we've got. It's hot, it's windy, but it feels really good for a big fish. And if we don't catch one, who cares? We've had a great adventure. Let us know. We're good to go. Yeah, catfish. Whoa. Oh my God. Oh my days. Oh my God. Oh my days. Just take your time, man. I have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. We said we'd come here for a gamble. It's not over until the fat lady sings, but mate, that is why we came here for that last minute attempt. Wow. Oh my days. I've just seen it and <laughs> smoking reels. Oh my the big God. Big water rod is in meltdown. I'm in meltdown. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Mate, this is crazy. Woo. <laughs> it's just, I literally can't stop it. The Zelos is screaming. in the middle of the flow now. My heart is absolutely yeah. pounding. Hello, Poochie. Uh 
mate. <laughs> we literally, just a few minutes ago, started seeing fish showing over the right hand rods. And it's the middle rods, the ones we, we've been making the most noise around, to be fair, where all of a sudden the rod's just gone wallop. Yeah, this is what this river is about. It's just amazing, mate. Literally, what a place to be. I can't <laughs> believe it's gone off, though, can you? Fantastic. <laughs> You, mate, I trust you. Right. I'm gonna just follow it down because it's yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna follow the fish we down do. now just to keep <laughs> just wind that and I get down you come down past it. Big silo. We saw him on the surface. <laughs> following to keep going <laughs> mate you can't stop up oh look just, at I'm that. just trying to keep that line uh, up you mate you need to drill him a bit huh? mate, do you... I can't do up buddy I've just got to he'll come still moving yeah he's still moving mate it's just I've just My heart is pounding. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. You get that sun, you can do that now, we can video that with the sun either way. I'll, I'll film you. Attached into an absolute donkey. Oh, that I filmed the wrong way. Let's find out what I just saw when it came up to the surface in the initial run it was Hulk Hogan. <clears throat> we'll go and get the net off. Um... Yeah, don't worry, mate, is there? Don't worry, it should take ages. We've just got to keep. Small fish. Small fish. I don't know Baby if it'll go in there. Baby fish. <laughs> Baby fish. Oh yeah. I don't it's know if it'll go in there. Don't... Where are you seeing a fish show? Like out yeah. in the middle? Literally out in the middle there. Yeah, that's why I'd seen one just. <laughs> it's where having a two and a quarter pound rod's not really helping. Try and shoot in for that if you can. Looks ace. <laughs> no, I know with the sun, look, you get the silhouette. Mega. This is so big, mate, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Follow. <laughs> I think you're too far away from it, mate. They're stretching the mono. <clears throat> There, he's on the surface. Just hit the surface there, mate. <laughs> Can you see him, mate? What's in the side here, mate? Just this concrete slope. Yeah. Just wherever I can get him in, mate. Mm -hmm. If if fish like this lived in our rivers, you'd never know. Nobody fishes with enough gear to land them, do they? Yeah, you want us to keep chatting? Yeah. Well, mate, we're about 200 yards from where Roman hooked this fish. We're just following it down, letting it wear itself out. 
We're running across the rocks like a pair of goats. Yeah, this is absolutely mental, mate. Um, I'm telling you, this is on another level. I don't think you've ever seen a uh, big water rock bend quite like that. It's That's literally just like a bag of potatoes, but with a 70 horsepower engine behind it. <laughs> Only 70. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I wish you were doing this. <laughs> you hear what he said? I wish you were doing this. If I'd had it in the net by now. <laughs> See, normally with core and fishing, we like to stay mobile, move in, swim, stay on the fish, but just catch a catfish. You've got to walk a mile to land the thing. And they're so powerful in this flow. <laughs> That's the thing, it's just... It's unbelievable, unbelievable. Totally different to a grass carp. Yeah, just a smidge. <laughs> I was just saying, mate, you know, normally core and fishing, we like to stay mobile, don't we? Keep the step count up. Well. You don't need to go roving on the rivers. We're about a kilometre down from where we you started. You just need to catch a catfish and walk a mile to land the thing. <laughs> right, it's coming, mate, it's coming. <clears throat> the line's singing in the wind. You be a good sign. Oh, mate. <sighs> Oh my days. Hand. And the hand. Oh, you, 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 you are more experienced than me. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. That is insane. It's too big for the net. It's too big for the net. Let me move the net. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. Oh. What how, a fish. How big is that? Very, how big would you say? Two meters? A meter two meters. Yeah, nearly two meters long. God knows how big, but this is amazing and what a fight. <laughs> hey, it's longer than Jeff and trust me, I've been in the shower with him. <laughs> <laughs> He's very long. <laughs> oh, mate. What a fish. Brilliant. Ah, it's a big fish. Amazing creature. <clears throat> well done, mate. Thank you very much. Well, the mate, thanks very was much, eh? Well know, done. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much, eh? Merci beaucoup. Whoa! Team come! Come on! <laughs> yes, mate. You made yes, well success. <laughs> Let's send this little girl on our way. Wow! Awesome. <laughs> Oh. Have you ever seen anything like that in your life? Yeah. The flow's got her. Off you go, girlie. Yeah, thank you very much. You're about going to be the most famous catfish in the world. about this then, my friend.